Oh my God, look at this. And this is the dangerous part. It can all come off together. Seriously, you wanna get out? This is crazy, but check this out. See, that's just garbage. Are you kidding? We had all this space? I haven't run into a house yet that had square walls. I love working on these old homes. These are my bread and butter. I gotta say, this floor is awfully comfortable. Wow. <laughs> wow, that's actually a rain cloud. We had all this space? The whole ground is heaving. Perfect, every time. Here we are. Welcome to Kevin Stephanie's house. This is a new client. They're on vacation, spending a couple weeks in Spain. So jealous. They're gonna be eating a lot of good food and enjoying a lot of great hotels with awesome showers. What they're not gonna come home to is the old boring shower that they had before they left. So I sent my son Matthew ahead of me today to take care of the site protection. Uh, really pleased. The kid did a great job. Uh, so while we're here talking about it, let's, let's point this out. What we have here is called Carpet Shield. This is a self-adhesive, kind of like a saran wrap, made for carpets. The idea here is, is on one side it's, it's really sticky, easy to put on, and then really easy to remove. And this guarantees that we aren't tracking dirt in and out of the house. Construction world today, we can't take our shoes off to work in your home. So what we have to do is create an environment where we can walk in our shoes. We're not going to destroy your house. Up on this level, this is what we call RAM board. Now it looks like cardboard, but it's extremely thick. And it has another property. They've got a, in the produ production cycle of this, they make it so that it's sort of water resistant. So even if you have a little bit of a spill or something, it'll, it won't soak through into the floor underneath. And so again, we tape this down with great care to make sure that everywhere we're walking, we're not gonna scratch or damage the floor. It's important, I think, I'm always a guest in your home. All right, wow, so you can see that this bathroom Matt's just starting to take off some of the fixtures before we start the demolition. You can see this bathroom's not bad. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, it's a four-piece bath, it's got a huge tub. Again, you know, the era of who the tub sells the bathroom. If you're like these folks, they've only used it once or twice in the entire time they've lived here, which is 10 years. So, a lot of these bathrooms nowadays, that's one-third of the room is taken up with useless fixtures. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna rip everything out of here we're going to reframe the wall. This is a joining wall with a semi-detached neighbor. And we're actually reframing it so we can run all, run all of our plumbing and electrical exactly the way we want it. And we're going to build in a shower nook, like a whole ledge. We're going to move the door over to the other end where the tub is now. We're going to hang one of those barn doors on a nice chrome rail. And that's going to really open up the space. That gives us room to add in a his and hers double vanity. You know, double mirror, double light fixture. That's going to be awesome. And then we'll move the toilet from that location over here. This wall will be gone, it'll just be a sheet of glass. And what we're gonna have is a barrier-free shower, gorgeous stone, extra lights, rain shower head, you know, shower bar one fixture. We're gonna put in a heated floor. We're really gonna dress it up nice. This is the situation, and the ensuite bath sells the house. So you go a little extra for a step with a couple of really cool design features, and you can really make this a showstopper. So when the time comes for them to move on, to sell this house, and you walk people into this bathroom, house is sold. So a quick tip when you're taking, removing one of these door systems, is you need to understand how it was installed. You need to be really careful. You're not gonna have an accident. So basically, this is like a closet door. The wheels are just hanging on the top track. And this is the dangerous part. It can all come off together. In a lot of cases, the top rail should be silicone in place so that it's a little safer. But can you imagine just having a shower one day? If you're a tall person and you lose your step, you hit that, the doors go flying everywhere. That'd be horrible. So I'm surprised they didn't silicone this in. But So basically you've got a couple of brad nails most likely in here and it's all cocked on and so you can't grab it and rip it off. So how would you take that off, man? Uh, I'd, I'd assume just smacking the ears into the side of it and then cranking it back as a yeah, okay, so fair enough. We're gonna do re-drywall so that doesn't matter. So you don't swing at it. That's dangerous. Just put it on there. Right, and look at that adhesive. Oh my God, look at this. 
MDF door, they use baseboard pieces as shims. New home construction folks, gotta love it. I know the world is looking for ways to make things that don't require cutting down trees, but... See, that's just garbage. If that was a solid piece of wood, I could have taken it off and reinstalled it again. The tub, how heavy do you think it is? 70 pounds. Probably not quite that bad. Okay. Now, it shouldn't be attached to anything. I've cut the silicone and removed all the fixtures. Let's see if we can get lucky and just give it a yank. Yep, it's gonna be okay. It's not that heavy. Although it is a little easier to do if you're not in the tub at the time. Yeah. Seriously, you wanna get out? <laughs> It'll just pop right out. And then, there we go. <laughs> Classic, eh? All right, this is crazy, but check this out. I don't know why, but every time I pull out a tub, somebody has left a bunch of crap Garbage in the tub area. This is insulation. There's nothing here to insulate. The wall's all closed off. The insulation's on the other side of that wall board. This is just somebody, I mean, they're not insulating this tub to keep the heat in, or there'd be like a lot of insulation. So either they were trying to insulate the tub and they were lazy, or they just had to clean up a mess and they were lazy. So welcome back to our barrier-free shower. We are about midway through the project right now. We've got all of our drywall on, our last coat of taping is finished. We have all of our mechanical finished and our shower pan is installed. And this is cool, this is what I was talking about earlier. We got two separate pans that slope down to the middle and this is where our drain goes, right in here. And so we're gonna use the kind of drain that the insert actually has got the same cloth on it so that it can receive a tile. And when we're done tiling this, all you'll see is this grout line won't have grout and the water will rush down the pan and into the drain. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna just finish off all of our waterproofing. That way we're ready to sand, prime, and paint before we tile. And generally speaking, as a rule, I like to do that first. Um, if you put the tile down and then you're doing all of that other work, you've gotta do all kinds of site protection to keep everything clean. So instead of rushing ahead and getting in the tile, we're gonna take the time, sand, prime, we're gonna paint the ceiling, put one coat on the walls at least, and then it'll be a lot easier to do the grout work after the tile's finished, because we'll have surfaces that we can actually wipe off with the sponge. We are using the Schluter Curdy system and the Curdy membrane and the prefab shower pan linear drain. So when you work with the Schluter products, use the Schluter tools. It's not the end of the world to buy a couple more tools. They have these little things. These are awesome. Now, in most showers, you don't need to put a gasket around a shower head. Water's never going to get up there. But nowadays, there's a lot of people using this system where you'll have an elbow here going to a water line on a hose attached to an adjustable slide bar. Now you're dealing with a hole in the wall that's lower that's going to see some water. So it's best to waterproof this area right here. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put down our curb. Now, my curb is a bit of a cheat. When I bought the shower pans, they were extremely large. They were, each of them were uh, five feet by five feet. So I had a lot of excess material. So what I did is I took a couple inches off the highest part of each of those, and I'm gonna use that as my curb. Here we go. So this tray has a integrated waterproofing flange that's part of the drain system. They give a 10 year warranty if you install it properly and you don't ever have to think twice about it. So that peace of mind, not just for my client but for me, it's worth its weight in gold. This is a Ditra trowel. It's been used a lot. Probably should keep my tools cleaner but basically just once we get the cement on the floor we're going to comb this out so we can lay our mat into it. Now this is our heating coil. Now, when you're figuring out your heating system, you buy it by square foot, but you don't just measure the size of the room. You, s you have to measure the size that you're going to heat. And then back we go. Make contact with the two wires. We're checking the resistance. And then we make that record. Yeah, right on the money. Everything's fine. Which you kind of expect because uh, other heating cable systems, they don't come with an insulated line like this. This is kind of cool. You'd have to do something pretty stupid 
which is why we use a rubber float to put it down, not a metal trowel. It is the end of week two on our project out here with our barrier-free shower. Now, it's not entirely barrier-free in, in the respect that the floor isn't continuous all the way through to the shower. But by barrier-free here, what I mean is that we're not going to have a door. So we're just going to have the glass. So you can see the shower here is basically built. We've got another good day of tiling left to go. But you can see how it's taking shape. We have our drain system down here with our removable drain. And this is all slope, the heating coil I brought right into the shower area. I did it on the far corner over there. Now I know some of you I mean, may be up on your Schluter technology, and the Schluter does not have a technique for bringing that into the shower right now. They've had a couple of issues with heat with their curb and wrapping the wire. So what I did is actually I took it across the, the backside underneath my stone, inside the, the waterproof area, and then I just coiled it through from there. I used a hot glue gun right onto the mat. A uh, very effective technique. It gives you good spacing, nice warm heat. Uh, there's no sense coming into a bathroom with a heated floor to step onto cold tile to turn on your shower and wait for the water to heat up the area. Especially shower this big, the floor is always going to be cold. Absolutely needed heat, so we did what we had to do. The shower nook here, we had a good idea when we got started where the shelf was going to be, but we built it in such a way that it's very easy to take the wall apart. Now our next tile lands right on that line. So after my second course was done, I measured off again, opened it up, cut it, and I just finished waterproofing this just a few minutes ago. Now I waited until after I was done my first two rows on the bottom. I got it all perfectly level and square, let it set up overnight. Then when I come back, that's when I open up my hole and get it all perfect. No sense trying to do everything in one day. Uh, there's lots of work to do in a bathroom, so get it on, get it dry, make sure when you're measuring you get it perfect because this is one spot where you don't want to have a grout line that's growing or shrinking or, or it's out of position or there's not enough room to add proper cement for your sill. Speaking of sill, here we go, marble. Nice and cute. This is going to sit right on top. We'll pull it out a little bit, add the one degree slope, and then on the back we're putting our marble mosaic. The same as the mosaic strip that's going to go down the wall here. You can see that we have the second row of this tile that will continue on up to the ceiling as well. So we're going to wrap this whole area in the sill. I kind of like that look. Whenever I get a chance, I like to use the marble sill or maybe a quartz product. Uh, it's just a nicer look than having all the extra metals or plastics in the shower. And it's a nice spot too when you have a little protrusion there, a little bit of contrast, a little bit of texture really works well because you can get a little thin bead of silicone after the fact not as a sealer but just to keep the growth from cracking so as you can see the tile on the floor in the um, bathroom area is finished we got that grouted today because where we're heading next is we're going to bring the vanity up it's a double his and hers a six foot so i've got the guys coming over to give us a hand we've got to do a recess cabinets uh, electrician was in this morning hooked up all of our fixtures and everything so that's out of the way but I just wanted to show you real quick the, the tile here. Unfortunately, Max wasn't able to make it on the day that I was doing the tile work with the leveling clips, because believe it or not, he does something else other than just these videos. So what we have here is I wanted a quick demonstration. This is a tile clip system. It's a leveling system. Now, you can use this when you're using those skinnier long boards, hut tiles, but I like to use it all the time on my large tile. And basically, it's just like an anchor. It sits underneath the tile, and then you slide your clip on over top and then set your tool and just creates compression like a zip tie and what that does is that holds that tile perfectly flat so all of your joints are perfect and you use the right kind of cement where if the tile is lifting it pulls the cement with it and when it dries it still transfers the load and doesn't put the tile at risk of breaking so here's a reno tip for doing heated flooring now, generally speaking, they're all wired the same. There's a thermostat box here. You need a power supply. It has to come from a GFI source. Um, most places you check with your building code for your area, but it has to be wired back to the panel of the GFI. So basically what you do is you run a lead wire from your box down through the plate, and you want to drill a hole out of the plate, nice and big, don't be cheap here, and you have the lead wire come through, and that's attached to the box right up here. 
And then this is the thermostat wire that's in my tile. And then this is the heated cable. Now the heated cable is a, looks a little different on the heat floor mat. It has a transition piece here. And this is not, this part of the cable doesn't get hot. All right, so there's, there's a little bit of a difference here. So what we do when we're ready to pull this wire up, I'm demonstrating this. Like I said, the electrician's already been here today. And one thing I didn't have him do is I did not have him wire up my thermostat. He's going to come back in a few weeks to do that. And I pay him extra to do that because of this one reason. The cement that's used to put this floor down has to stay wet as long as possible in order for it to go nice and hard. It's part of the curing process. And every client that I know, the first thing they do when they see that the heated flooring thermostat's installed is turn it on, they want to take it for a test drive. But what you're doing is you're wrecking your warranty because you're causing the, the cement to heat up too fast, it dries out, it won't bond properly, and then you end up having a tile failure. So the heating flooring is still gonna work, but your tile is gonna fail. So when you're doing your heated floor, leave the thermostat off until you run your 30 days from installation. That way you'll be sure that the clients won't turn it on before it's time. There we go. Now we're just gonna check the ohms meter one more time. Perfect. Now we know that everything is fine. The cable hasn't been damaged. It's all covered, it's sealed, grouted, cables run. Only thing left to do is put this to the thermostat box. But like I said, that's for another day. All right. There we go. That way, and you won't be able to do a touch up on it, but you can do the touch up on the handrail. So you pay attention to that side. That was the point there. Oh, okay, let me just sit on the stairs. No, straight back, don't turn the corner yet. Down. And break time. So great lighting. Yeah. See, I was really worried because I picked everything I and then I didn't <laughs> see the process to see how it would go in together. Yeah. And it, oh my Jesus. I have a new place to pee. <laughs> oh. Oh, that's the, that's that's the, the drain. drain. Right that's the invisible the drain. Yeah. Oh my, it really is invisible. Your shower is now four by seven and a half feet. <gasps> Which is oh, and it's got the handheld thing. Oh yeah, yeah, it's adjustable bar, thermostatic and pressure balance valve. What what does that mean? It means uh, you can set your temperature. So all you do is turn it on. Oh, okay. And you don't have to think twice. And if somebody flushes the toilet and adjusts for pressure, it keeps your temperature. Oh, okay. So no more morning surprises. Yeah. And with the rolling door. Yeah. Like you've got all this floor space that's uninterrupted. That's it. No more swing. Everything's oh, out of the way. Oh my god. Uh, Heated flooring, right into the shower. Toasty, t the shower too? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh my God. You can't have a warm floor to step on cold tile and have heated up floor from the shower water. Because okay. if your shower's so big, you gotta have a... Yeah, we're gonna have a so cold we, spot at the we end. We heat the floor. That makes sense. Yeah. Oh my God. So we brought God. it all the way through. Well, thanks for joining us today. And if you'd like to see the projects that we're doing in the future, hit the subscribe button so you get notified every time we have a new video. Or check out the link over here and you can check out some of our past projects. While you're making that decision, I gotta find a new color.